Hello and welcome back to Football Manager 2020 with Southport. We are in the Football League and today there's a lot of stuff to get through. If you didn't see the last episode, which I completely understand because it was a week and a half, maybe two weeks ago by the time this actually goes out, apologies for that. If you didn't see it, we secured promotion. We were champions of the Vanarama National League. We have got ourselves in to League Two. And it's going to be very, very difficult this season. Obviously, getting promoted means new players have joined the club. Some players have left the club. And the more astute of you would have spotted on the right-hand side, our finances are kind of fixed, but also kind of broken. Before we go into the transfers, I want to talk about the finances a little bit. Now, you'll see that we do have a huge amount of money that has gone into the club. £300,000 there or thereabouts, which was put in there by the chairman. And we've then spent it all because I did something stupid. I 100% take credit for this. It is all my fault. We have a transfer budget of minus 100,000, which is impressive. And it's because I've done this. I've released a load of players. And by I, I told my director of football, just get rid of them. They're not good enough. They're never going to make it for us. I don't want to pay their wages. So they did that. The problem is it paid out their contract. We would have just been better off just paying their wages. Um, if I'm perfectly honest, we would have been better off doing that, but we've got rid of a load of players. Some of these players kind of left on freeze normally, as you'd expect. Others were kind of forced out of the club against their will. Other players to leave the club then, four players have left the club for a little bit of money. David Morgan is the first one, the Northern Irish central midfielder. One appearance away from 100 appearances for Southport. He's left, he's signed for Cheltenham for £20,000. Didn't really play a lot last season, so I kind of thought we'll cash in on him while we can. Another player who didn't play particularly a lot of football for us was Rio Glean. He has signed for Chesterfield for, I think, £17,000. They're not big numbers, £17,500. I think we might have a sell-on in there for Rio Glean. I'm not quite sure on that one. Another player who probably played more than I thought he did is Morgan Boys. He's left the club signing for TNS. I want to call them TN Solutions. It's not. It's the New Saints, I believe is what they're called. He's signed £13.25 million. Pound. Million pounds? £13.25 million. Pounds. Thousand pounds. £13.25 thousand £13.25,000. And our record signing, Mikel Scarlett, has also left the club, signing for Wrexham for just £5,000. The board were not particularly pleased with this one because obviously we actually made a loss on him. Joining the club then, in no particular order, starting off with Leighton Stewart, the Liverpool youngster who I think in real life has just signed a new deal with Liverpool. 18 years of age, he's obviously not got far to travel from Liverpool to Southport. Free transfer, I think he's good. Four-star current ability, five-star potential. He's technically better than Cameron Archer, and as we know from last season, Cameron Archer is actually bloody good. Next up is our Mikel Scarlett replacement. It is 22-year-old American right-back Marlon Fossey, a player who I didn't think we were going to be able to get. I'd been keeping an eye on him. I wanted to get him last season, but he ended up, I think he went to Yeovil on loan. He did. Wanted to get him when he was at Yeovil, couldn't manage it. Got his contract at Fulham, has ended, so we've managed to pick him up on a free transfer. Three and a half star current ability, four and a half star potential. I think we've got a good little player here in Marlon Fossey. From a right back to a left back, we have signed 24 year old English left back Josh DeBio, formerly of Southampton and Chelsea and Leicester, apparently. He's not as good as I thought he'd be, if I'm honest. Two star current ability, two and a half star potential. We struggle with left backs. The only reason why I really wanted him is because he's actually a wing back. He's not a left back, he is a wing back. And he's actually pretty good in terms of pace. It's technically not so great, but I'm thinking maybe his crossing. That's all we really need. He's determined. Is that a good thing? I don't know. If we look at him compared with our other sort of wing backs, he's better than Bradley Bowers and Joel Whittingham. So, you know, I mean, he's the leading player for most Vanarama North and South sides. We need a left back, but I don't think we're going to get one anytime soon. We've also gone and signed ourselves Ghanaian central defender Zico Asare on loan from Fulham. He's basically come in because Marlon Fossey wanted a friend. So I brought in Zico Asare in. Three-star current ability, five-star potential. He is Physically very good. Acceleration of 15, natural fitness of 16, pace is 14 as well. I'm hoping he's going to do a job at our level of football. We are going to struggle this season. We are really going to struggle this season. So I just wanted to get more players, better players, players who've got a bit of experience. He's got two games for himself for Fulham, probably in the championship, but still two games. We have also gone and signed ourselves 18-year-old English goalkeeper James Trafford from Manchester City. He will probably be our number one goalkeeper this season. Three and a half star current ability, five star potential. I think we've got a real star player here in James Trafford. He might not be the first name on the team sheet to begin with, 
but I think because of his age and his potential ability, we do need to kind of make him our number one sooner rather than later. We've also signed French attacking midfielder Ili Iliman and Dai, there you go, from Sheffield United and then immediately loaned him out to Gloucester for the season. I think they're paying all of his wages as well. So yeah, basically he's got some potential. That's kind of the only reason why I brought him in. He's all right, I guess. He'll hopefully play a load of football for Gloucester. And now the two big names. That's right, we've bought two big name players. First of all, Bradley Johnson, 34 years of age now, will be 35 by the end of the season. And by the time his contract expires, the former Blackburn Rovers and Derby County man and Norwich man and Leeds United and Brighton and Northampton and Stevenage and Gravesend and Cambridge man has joined the club on a free transfer till the end of the season. Three star accountability, three star potential. But I'm hoping because he is a he's, he's an experienced player. He's an experienced player of nearly 500 appearances to his name over his career. I'm hoping he is going to be one of those players that he can help the youngsters. We've got a lot of kids on our side. We need some adults. And Bradley Johnson, I think, is one of the good adults to pick. The other adult that we've signed is Jacob Butterfield, 31 years of age now, formerly of Luton, Bradford City and Derby County, which arguably is where he made his name. Also played for Sheffield Wednesday, Huddersfield, Middlesbrough, bit of time at Norwich Palace, Bolton Barnsley as well. So he's also been around. I thought he was older than what he was. He's only 31. Four-star current ability, four-star potential. Once again, central midfielder position. We've got him and Bradley Johnson, who are hopefully going to be the two rocks in the middle of the pitch. He's a deep line playmaker by trade, but he can base basically, he's better than all of our other options, isn't he? So Jacob Butterfield has also joined the club. Also, both of our central midfielders now have shoots from distance. So I'm hoping we get some worldies from them. So that is the transfer business joining the club. Also, we've loaned out a few players and die, as I've mentioned, to Gloucester. Kingsley Latham to Boston, Sam Corn to Wrexham, and Yannick Aziakuno has gone out on loan to Darlington. Now, the good news about this division is only two teams get relegated. And according to the season preview, we are fourth worst. Not fourth best, fourth worst in the league. So Leighton Orient, Barnet and Morecambe are expected to be the ones to go down. I mean, they are awful Awful odds, 300 and 325 to 1 to win the league. So you have to assume that we're going to be better than those two. Also, looking at our key players, James Trafford and Leighton Stewart, which I'm quite happy with. If we then click on us over here, what does it say we're going to be playing? So obviously it's the 5-2-1-2 wing back, Trafford in gold, Denham, Shotton and Asare, Fossey and Debayo, Johnson and Butterfield, Flaherty, Archer and Stewart. To be honest... That's pretty spot on, I think. From the top of my head, I think that's probably what we're going to be going with. I did just completely forget to mention Saul Shotton has extended his loan deal. I don't know whether that was something I've mentioned in a previous episode. For me, it's been about two, three weeks since I last played as Southport, so I can't remember whether I've mentioned this. But yeah, Saul Shotton is here for another season, which is good. So just to remind everybody, myself included, the club vision then for this season, they just want us to avoid relegation, which is fine. I'm happy with that. They're expecting us to be a League 2 side now for the next five years. I'm hoping we're not a League 2 side for the next five years. If things keep going the way that they're going, we're going to be in League 1 this time next season, aren't we? Because we've had two promotions in two seasons. Hopefully we can keep it up. Another thing to mention as well, which I don't think I've mentioned before, is our stadium, Hague Avenue, has been increased slightly. I think it's the seated capacity. I think we had like 1,400 seats or something like that. They've added 600 more seats. They've basically rounded it up to 2,000, which I think, if we have a look at the rules, is potentially a rule that we actually need. There you go. Minimum stadium seating capacity is 2,000. Minimum stadium capacity is 5,000. So yeah, basically, they needed to have both of those two kind of ticked. That is going to do it then for the first episode of Season 3 with Southport. Next episode will be later on today. It will be the opening match up against Grimsby on the 31st of July. There are still some transfers that might come through. I don't think they're going to come through before the Grimsby game, but there are still some transfers that are taking place. And I'm pretty sure the transfer window for us remains open for a little bit longer. Anyway, thank you very much for watching episode one of season three of Football Manager 2020 with Southport. If you did enjoy, do remember to leave a like. If you want to see more, hit the subscribe button. And I'll be back next time, later on today, with the matchup against Grimsby.